I'd like to show you how to do a puzzle cut lid. Here's an example. I made the form by closing it totally like a bottle and keeping going and then with that air in there you can press on it and finish the pot. When you leave it, make sure you poke a hole in it so that air can get out as the pot shrinks. So when it's leather hard you can trim it like I did here and then cut the opening. Now a couple considerations when you cut the opening. It should be at least three. If you have two or worse yet one it'll slide. So by having three points or more it locks into place. Also it only fits on one way so make sure that you make some kind of key. I put a couple little dots here so someone in the future can go, oh, that's how it goes together. So to do it, almost too simple. But a couple things you should know about. Think about where you want the opening. I'm going to put this one Ooh, about, about halfway down. I'm just spinning it so I can get a nice line on it. I'm using a pencil to draw on there. Now, you can have the design dictate the line. Or you can have a random line, or you can be very precise. Avoid really sharp, pointy edges. A sharp, re really sharp, point, pointy edge, what will happen is it can continue cracking. So if you decide to have a point, it's fragile. If you decide to have a point, before you put it away, pack it in there. Get that corner so it's really, really nice and tight. I'm just going to do a random line on this one. One, two, and three. Glaze a little bit on the soft side, but it's, it's okay. You'll find when you close a form like this, it takes longer to dry because the air can't get to both sides. Now, I sketched it out with a pencil first, and I'm making kind of a deep line. And the reason for that is when you cut with a knife, that knife wants to wander. But you do want to use a knife to do this so you get a nice clean cut and a clean joint on your piece. So on this one I could come back in and put additional lines and you know it could be quite nice. So you can use don't use a needle tool and the reason for that is the thickness. The needle tool's got a thickness to it while the knife is, a, is very very thin. When you do cut in, cut in, don't saw, just go in and make one continuous movement all the way around till you get it open. So I'm going to go in and sometimes if that, oh, I just felt air come out. That hole had sealed up a little bit. So I'm not stopping, I'm not sawing. I'm just trying to keep the blade level and go around and open up the jar. These gentle curves are much easier to cut than a sharp edge one. But you make it your own. 
almost to where I started, and there it is. So, there's the jar that's open. Now, when I closed it, there's a weak spot right here. And I need to take that off and compress it. And I found the best thing to compress it with is the back side of the wooden knife that you have. It's like a wooden finger. And you go one direction and the other direction and really pack it in. Because you can't do that. When you're throwing on the potter's wheel, you've got the hard metal of the wheel head or the bat to push against. Well, and it compresses the clay. But this, there's nothing there on the other side. So really work that little center area there. Robin Hopper was a wonderful Canadian potter. He wrote some really good books. Uh, he would always have problems with cracking right here. You'd get a little S crack. So his solution was to take a little ball of clay, score there, score the ball of clay, put it in, and then do a stamp at that point. So th that way, if it cracked underneath, no one would see it. So I prefer to just clean it up and pack it, pack it, pack it. Just, just work that point right there in the center. Okay, now I have it open. These edges are sharp. You've got to be very careful not to cut any more in the center but you can certainly trim and round off the outside edges. So that's what I'm going to do with this. And I find if I bevel it a little bit, it makes it much easier to glaze. Because these do need to be fired together. I'm just beveling it. Going around that inside edge first. not touching the top and I'll just trim just a little hair off the outside so I can have a little area that will be unglazed. You could do this with a sponge I suppose. I like to use this exacto knife. It tends to really make a nice clean cut. And if you have that sharp transition from the body to that change of direction on the bevel, it's much easier to wax when you go to wax it to prepare it for glazing. There. I'll take the sponge. clean off any of those sharp edges. And I'll do the same thing to this one. If you rest your finger on the outside, that can act as a guide so you don't, so the knife doesn't get out of control. Just ever so little, just enough to Bevel it a little bit and take off that sharp edge. Soften it a little bit with the sponge. And remember, don't, you know, if you have a ding there, don't really dig in because what'll happen is you'll have a gap after it's after you put it back together. Now, how does this go back together? 
Not like that. Like that. So. Now, you did put a hole in it. Make sure you heal that hole. And now you have options. You know, this size, I could pick this up with one hand, so I don't need to do anything on top. On, you could add handles, you could add a sculptural element. That's up to you. They need to be dried together and fired together. So, before you put it away, mark one point on the outside on top and bottom, so people will know how to put it back together. Make a key. So I'm just going to take the end of my needle tool, make a little circle, And anyone who gets this in the future will know how to put the lid back together. Thank you.